Ben tell you in his office, or how'd that work? Yeah, so Ben told me while we uh, I was sitting in his office, and then it didn't really hit me then, and then we walked back to the clubhouse, and then whenever he, he announced it to everybody, and everybody kind of went crazy, that's when it, you know, I started tearing up a little bit, and with all my guys celebrating with me, it was, it was a lot of fun. I think you went 415 last night or 412, the home runs. Where did the pop come from for you? I know you, you hit a bunch of balls hard in spring training. Has that been a natural progression for you? Yeah, I think uh, some some point, I want to say we were playing in Indianapolis. Our hitting coach just kind of let me know that I was swinging real timidly, and you know, he think I had more in the tank. In the tank. And um, after that, I just started trying to swing harder and you know trying to hit balls harder, and then they started going a little bit farther. So it was, it was a, lot, a lot of fun. And so we're, we're just going to sleep knowing you're going to be here today. I mean, was, what was that like? I mean, just kind of getting back home and mentally preparing for today. I don't know if you could call it sleep. I didn't I didn't get too much shut eye, but no, nah, I mean, it was, it was fantastic. You know, just thinking about, I feel like I was a little bit more nervous yesterday than I was today. Um, you know, I feel pretty good right now, a little relaxed. I'm sure that'll change when, when the game starts, but no, nah, I mean, just overwhelmed with emotions for sure. Has it hit you yet that you are, are you in the majors? Oh, 100 percent. I mean, I'm looking at Bush Stadium right now. You got the arc in the background. I mean, it's every everything is fantastic. I mean, it's it's really exciting for me. You remember when Jordan made it, you jumped up on the bus and screamed out. What did, what did Jordan say to you when you, you know, could congratulate you? Yeah, he was one of the first person, one of the first people I called. Yeah, I, I, I let him know and, and he immediately started screaming, wasn't really saying words, just kind of a high pitched scream for a little bit. <laughs> but nah, super excited. We, you know, we talked for a little bit. He just wanted to, you know, congratulate me and let me know that uh, I was going to be just fine up here. Have you been Bruce Cole Mason your folks? Oh, my mom, for sure. Mom, no doubt. My stepdad was with her, and then uh, after that, straight to my agent. But, yeah, my mom is first, always. What was her reaction? Oh, screaming just as, just as loud as Jordan was. You know, <laughs> she might have shed a tear, but, no, nah, she was super excited. You know, they're going to be here today, and, you know, they just kind of started panicking. They had to find flights and stuff, but, no, nah, she was super excited. What do you think the emotions will be when you step in the box the first time or field your first ground ball? How will you calm yourself down and not be too jittery over this? Oh, I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm hoping I can get a ground ball before I step in the box. I might, I might step in there with, with some shaky legs, but, <laughs> but no, nah, I'm, I'm assuming it'll be a lot of fun. I'm hoping I can, you know, you can just breathe through it and, uh, you know, just try to calm myself down a little bit and then just go to work. You know, it's still baseball at the end of the day. Looking back on it, how big was spring training for you? Because you opened a lot of eyes, and that, it seemed like that changed how they viewed you after spring training. Yeah, hundred percent. I think, um, you know, getting to meet a lot of the older guys and. and interacting with them obviously Nato and Goldie and Edmund and some of those guys were gone with the WBC but you know for the most part I mean it was got to build some relationships and got to show them what I can bring to the field and you know I think just as the season has progressed I've, I've progressed offensively and defensively I've been holding my own so I think uh, you know I'm really excited for this for this. Mason, what's, this, what's this year been like for you and I mean obviously you've had such an outstanding year in AAA but to have those numbers and also keep your poise and trust that this moment would come how was that like for you? It was good. I mean, I started off rough. You know, I, I didn't really, uh, I wasn't itching for this day. I mean, obviously, I know a lot of guys are, and I, I knew my time would come at some point, so I was just trying to be patient. Um, but yeah, I started off real rough. It was, it was kind of tough, but you know, with my guys bringing me back and, you know, swinging a little bit better, a lot more confidence going out there. It's been a lot of fun, and, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm hoping I can take my AAA experience into here and, and just perform right off the bat. You said you weren't for this day. Why not? Why, why were you not sort of looking forward to this? Now, I'm sure you looking forward to it. No, of course. I uh, I was thinking, I just didn't think they were going to call me up at, at some point this year. I thought it was going to be a 2024 opening day, but, um, you know, when I when I got told yesterday, I almost started crying. So, um, no, nah, it's 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 some definitely, definitely surreal. I just didn't expect it to come so soon. I'm just super excited it did. There's been a fair amount of social media chatter about the potential. Do you try to tune that out? Oh, 100 percent. I mean, you know, I still had to show up every day in AAA and, and play my game and, you know, try to stay healthy, but at the same time playing hard. And um, there's been a, l a lot of talk, but I tried, I tried not to, to look at the most of it. Um, but I mean, it's at some point you got to see some of it. And, you know, the hype around, you know, when this when this day would come was, was building up. So I was trying just not to think about it. For you and Jordan, was this the way you guys envisioned it? You know, kind of going, going through the minor leagues together and everything like that, that you guys would come up kind of sort of around the same time, same year oh, and everything? Absolutely. I think uh, I think Tink is somewhere on his way as well. But, nah, I mean, me and Jordan talked about this in low A, you know, high A, double A. 
he wasn't in AAA for too long once he got called back down. But I mean, we, we talked about us both being up here and, and towing that field together. And I mean, the fact that it's today, I'm super excited. I mean, I know he is, you know, I just wanna, I wanna go out there and ball out. Oh, you've um, taken, I think, like third or fourth most played appearances across like all the minor leagues. I mean, what has this year taught you about just kind of managing, I guess, the day in, day out grind of being an everyday player? Uh, I honestly, I think it's just taking advantage of my youth. I mean, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the guys down there saying, you know, you know, I'm getting the DH day because I'm an old guy. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I only got a couple of those, but I was at shortstop, second base every day. I mean, that's just something that, you know, I want to take advantage of while I can, while my legs are fresh and while I feel good. I think if I'm healthy, you know, even if I'm only 70%, I want to be out there on the field. For Where sure. did you get better specifically? You mentioned throughout this season you've grown as a hitter, as, as a fielder. What areas specifically did you get better in? Well, I changed my stance, and then after that, um, I think I was striking out a whole bunch at the beginning of the year. So I tried to, I think I over-exaggerated, just making more contact, hitting a lot of ground balls. But then after that, it was just swinging hard and mixed with the contact, and, you know, balls started to fly. But, yeah, a big, definitely a stance change. If you haven't seen me since mm -hmm. spring training, it's going to be a little different. But that was probably the biggest reason for me. Why did you change your stance? I was hitting about a buck eighty for the first month, so I was like, something's got to change. At, at some point, you know, minor adjustments don't work, so I had to make a major adjustment. Did the stance allow you to maybe see the ball better or see it deeper, or what, what was the biggest change that came out of the new stance? I, I honestly just think it was—it's more of a different approach. I mean, you know, like I said, I said a few days ago, a lot of guys like me, you know, you see guys like Jordan Walker and Luke and Baker and. You, you think you try to put yourself into this single sitter mode and that's just not really that's you know I've never been that in high school I had some power and and going up I did as well so it's I tried to just get back to that mindset swing harder swinging more for the fence and it's it's working out for me right now. Mason when, when you and Jordan would talk about being here together is that a conversation about getting here or a conversation about staying here is there a difference between those Oh, we've talked about winning the World Series here. So, I mean, for us, I mean, obviously he's a year ahead of me now, but I mean, we want to we want to be here for a while. We want to win. We want to win a lot of games. I mean, this organization historically is, is a very winning organization. And, you know, that's something we want to be a part of, um, you know, go to the playoffs, have that experience and win a World Series would be would be huge. What's it like for you to know this day one, you're here day one, but then to know you have all that in front of you, like they have that laid out like that. How do you how do you balance it? You know, I mean, really, I just, it's pretty simply put, but I just try to chill. I mean, you know, the rest of this year, I'm just going to go out there, try to get some games under my belt, try to get comfortable, or at least as comfortable as I can, and, um, you know, just see how how uh, these guys go about their business and, and how they approach the game. I'd love to see, you know, Nato and Goldie day in and day out, how they go about their business. Mason, I was looking back at the Futures game roster from a couple of years ago. There's a lot of guys now making an impact, guys like Jordan and Ellie. Do you kind of look, be watching some of those teammates you have in the Futures game, kind of having success in the, in the bigs? Oh, 100 percent. I mean, you know, going there, seeing all the talent that's there. I mean, that's I mean, it's called the Futures game for a reason. It's the future of the game. And, you know, then going to the Fall League and seeing some of those same guys and then seeing them go to the pros, I mean, or the majors, I should say. And it's just it's it's pretty cool to see. I mean, you know, it's. It's definitely different with Jordan. I mean, it's very personal for me. You know, we're best friends, but I mean, just seeing all the guys that I've played with and, you know, I've competed with up here having success, I feel like I can come up here and have some a success sense of, like, as well. Of like that group. Of course, yeah. You were in Memphis, but how many games were you, the guys talk about their game would end and then have the Cardinal game on the clubhouse? How many games would you try to watch or maybe on an off day? Watch Jordan's at bats or, or things like that. Yeah, I mean, anytime, anytime the game is on in the clubhouse, I mean, we're we're watching it locked in. I mean, if Jordan's up there, I might, I might be a little bit late <laughs> getting out to the field just so I can see his at bat. But mm -hmm. no, nah, I mean, as much as I can. I mean, watching our pitchers and watching our hitters go about their business and and seeing what I'm going to be a part of, it's, it's been pretty fun all year. How much can this help you prepare for that spring and, and next season? Just getting this experience, knowing everything from where to go, uh, when you when you walk into the building to, to getting the routine of the day to day of the majors. How much can it put you in a spot to compete next year? Oh, I think it's huge for me. I mean, you know, I think showing up opening day would have probably been a little bit more nerve wracking. I mean, me and Jordan talked about it, and he uh, he just told me how the experience was and how emotional he was and. 
So I'm, I'm really excited to, to be able to, like I said, get some games under my belt and, and just be able to, you know, go out there and play baseball. I mean, it's the same at every level. So I'm just hoping I can get past these first few days and then we'll, we'll let it rock. Will you have family here tonight or anybody flying in or any friends or family going to make it? Oh, lots of family coming oh, in tonight. Yeah, all, all my siblings. I want to say we got about 15 coming in wow. tonight. So I'm, I'm super excited to see all them. Amazing the way it worked out. You're here this weekend, and Cheo gets his red jacket this weekend for, for the Hall of Fame. What has he meant to you for the last couple of years in your development? Oh, I mean, I for sure would not be where I'm at without Cheo. I mean, especially especially when you talk about just day in and day out, fundamentals of the game and, and being able to be consistent on defense. I mean, my first year, I think I had 26 errors, and then, you know, it's just progressively gotten better, and I would I'd have to give all the credit to him. I mean, I work with him as much as I can in spring training. I really try to take advantage. I mean, obviously, Ozzy's the wizard, but, I mean, Cheo's more like a Yoda. I mean, he's, he's, he's a master. He really knows what he's talking about, and so anything he has to say, I'm going to listen to him.